The theme of your conference is planning great places and I thought it was interesting in the questions earlier that someone said, uh, you know, how do we get young people interested in this uh, profession? And uh, all my uh, career I've been interested in what makes places successful. Why are some places growing faster than others? Why are some places left behind? And for places that are left behind, what can we do to, to fix it? So my uh, career has been driven by how can I make the Highlands a more successful place? In terms of the, the region, you'll be familiar with, with the Highlands, but this, the scale of it is, as Malcolm said, really significant. We cover around a third of Scotland's land mass, um, 26,000 square kilometres, and we are the second fastest growing part of Scotland, um, just slightly behind Aberdeenshire in the last census. Uh, the population of Inverness uh, in 2001 was 53,000, and in 2011 was 62,000, an 18% increase. So you're in a fast-growing and dynamic part of Scotland. And of course, a part of Scotland with two Premier League football teams, something which can't be said of our capital city. <laughs> now, this year, uh, this year, of course, uh, we have uh, no Rock Ness, uh, unfortunately uh, postponed due to the Commonwealth Games, and uh, no Scottish Open. But uh, Malcolm assured me that the heads of planning would make a significant economic impact on our uh, region, and uh, certainly you proved to be the case. That proved to be the case last night. So, um, I'd like to talk about uh, four things um, this morning, just uh, four leadership challenges that I think we all face uh, in leading our authorities. Uh, firstly, planning ahead, managing performance, improving customer service, and then delivering development. I think it's easy to talk about things that we want to do, but it actually makes a difference if we deliver those things um, on the ground. Now firstly, uh, planning ahead. This is obviously uh, fundamental to everything we do as, as leaders. It's essential to take time out and I think that's where organisations like HOPS play an important role. You've got to think about uh, time away from the office, even the travel time that you have here. Time for reflection is really important and that's why I'm supportive of all of my team being involved in uh, organisations like the RTPI and with HOPS and why I was so pleased that Malcolm was chairing your organisation last year. You have to have a bigger picture understanding of what you're doing and, and lift your eyes from the, the day to day from time to time. And I'm quite actively involved with uh, organisations like the Scottish Cities Alliance and I've seen significant benefits from just learning from some of your colleagues such as Mike Galloway in, in Dundee. Um, but planning ahead of course has another context within planning and I'll touch on that in a minute but I want to emphasise your role as ambassadors for your areas. Every time you go to work you, you should be thinking what am I leaving behind for the person who's, who's dealing with me? Am I a good ambassador for my area? That's what I think you should be. Planning is an outward looking, an outward facing profession and you must think of the, the context in which you're operating. And I think also working in partnership is a key element of the leadership we have to provide. Uh, working with the private sector, working with other agencies. So think of yourselves as positive partners and ambassadors for your profession. Now our uh, aim in, in uh, Highland Council is to be a, a leading design focused uh, development plan authority or the leading sorry, design focused uh, development plan authority in Scotland and we want to uh, ensure that our development plans create and maintain high quality places and we deliver sustainable economic growth. And uh, as I said, my career is about making the Highlands a more successful place and that's what uh, the, the ethos of our, our, our service. And we also are, are involved in uh, significant initiatives uh, such as the Council's Cl Carbon Clever initiative which is uh, aiming to deliver carbon neutral Inverness in the low carbon Highlands by 2025. And the third point I've emphasised on the slide there is the need to collaborate with communities. We've, we've talked about that, Thomas mentioned it last night. We need to engage uh, from the earliest stages in the planning process and particularly reach out to those who are hard uh, to reach. Um, and that's the way that we'll uh, ensure successful places and our vision is realised. The uh, Minister mentioned the importance of the, of the plan-led system and we have in place the, the Highlandwide uh, LDP, sorry we missed an H there, uh, Highlandwide LDP uh, which was um, approved in, in April 2012 and that gives a consistent uh, framework for development, a vision and spatial strategy. Now we cover a huge area in, in the Highlands so we have uh, three local development plans sitting underneath that Highlandwide plan and uh, we've just uh, delivered the um, Innermurray Firth development plan to the uh, Scottish uh, Government. There's a strong focus at the moment on, on city and town centres and we've been very active uh, around this. Uh, we've been involved with charrettes in, uh, in Nairn, 
in Tain and in Fort William and uh, yesterday you helped us with our work in uh, Inverness which was uh, much appreciated. So as, as was mentioned last night I'm leading a, a task force on Inverness uh, trying to make sure that uh, we maximise the footfall and uh, economic opportunities in, in the city centre. And it was really pleasing to, to see that your uh, ideas are, are feeding into some of our work. Uh, I'm sorry you weren't able to walk around the, uh, the city centre yesterday. Um, at the same time as you were doing that, I was walking around inspecting the uh, Riverness flood scheme, which is uh, now one of my projects. Um, and uh, my daughter was also doing a Duke of Edinburgh Award uh, walk down at Lagan, so I think she probably is still drying out this morning. So that's uh, what we're doing around city and, and town centres. Now managing performance, um, we regularly report on, on performance to our service committee and we have in place the, the service improvement plan um, and regularly take that to, to members and I think it's very important that we do this, we make sure that Scottish Government, the private sector and others are up to speed with our, our plans and, and how we're uh, taking the work forward. We've just expanded our, our service and we now take in the, the council's construction, uh, both in terms of bu buildings and, and uh, roads, flood schemes and so on. And we came up with a, a new uh, mission, vision statement and, and mission and values and principles, which relate to the council's values and principles. And I think these are very uh, applicable to your areas as well. Uh, a thriving and sustainable future, delivering sustainable economic growth, empowering communities and enhancing the built and natural environment. And then the values and principles we operate under are those provided uh, through the Council and we've worked on those uh, as a service as well. Improving customer service is the, the next uh, section that I'd like to deal with. Now, in the one of the things that we, we had from members is that we weren't being active enough around enforcement. So one of the things that we did with the rise in uh, planning fees uh, was to put in place a central enforcement team. And that's already paying dividends in terms of the relationship with members, but also uh, with communities. Another um, innovation which we introduced a number of years ago is our pre-application advice service for major developments. Now we do charge a, a fee for this, it's around a thousand pounds a time. Um, we operated with 28 projects uh, during 2013 and, and 14 um, and these are very well received. We, we have uh, a commitment to get back to applicants within four weeks of receiving their um, presentation which we run on a monthly basis so any developer with a major project can come into the council and get the feedback across the council services and statutory consultees and it's a service which uh, developers have been happy to to pay for. In terms of major developments as well um, we, we have a significant amount of, of guidance, we also carry out case reviews and importantly uh, we now have processing agreements in place for all of the major applications that we deal with. We're involved as well in, in terms of uh, charrettes both in the uh, I've mentioned the, the three that we've done before, but in Wick and Thurso we ran charrettes as well, and these fed into the uh, preparation of our um, Caithness and Sutherland local development plan. These charrettes were really well attended, uh, they provided over three days a chance for the communities to, to be engaged um, and well received in terms of the, uh, the, the process. Delivering development. I just want to touch on some of the things that we're doing in the Highlands and some of the important projects that we have and how we're actually delivering development on the ground. This is a, a slide which shows the NIG fabrication facility and, and when Ian was the chair of our committee we spent about five years trying to solve the uh, ownership issues relating to the, the NIG yard. But I can say now that uh, this is a, a very active and, and productive facility employing over 1500 people and uh, recently they put in an application to build a new key side which you can see on the, on the diagram um, and the processing agreement there led to a, a three month determination period which was well within the, the target we'd set. Another example of innovative design uh, is a school very near here which is the Milton of Leys Primary School. Uh, this was designed in-house in by the uh, council's uh, team of architects and won a recent award at the Inverness Architects Association. We're also involved in some really interesting projects on the west coast and this is a new village at Kilbeg 
on the island of Skye, which is uh, being led by the uh, Gallic College, Soma Rostig, which is a really good example of education leading uh, development in a way that's probably um, not being replicated anywhere else in Scotland. One of the challenges for Soma Rostig was uh, housing people who come and work at the college, and this is a new village which is being built adjacent to the college, and the building there that's going up is a new um, enterprise centre for some of the businesses that are housed in the college, which are expanding. And this is the first new village in Sky uh, for 100 years. We're also very active, as, as Sandy's mentioned, the need for affordable housing, and these are just some of the schemes that are being developed uh, here in Inverness, but also through in, in Nairn. We're very active working with our housing colleagues who are now part of our uh, service. And Ian touched on it uh, earlier, but the whisky industry is going through a significant expansion um, in the Highlands and in Murray. And here's just an example of uh, a new development, a new distillery on the west coast at Arden American, creating a significant number of jobs in a very fragile rural area. And just uh, lastly, to, to touch on some of the developments, John O'Groats, uh, which was in receipt of a Carbuncle Award recently, um, within the last decade anyway, and now is a really shining example of tourism development in the north of, of Scotland, uh, with significant investment from natural retreats in new lodges and a refurbished um, hotel. And then lastly, uh, this is a very important area for renewable energy and we need to make sure that we have a, a plan-led system which delivers that development. But we've got huge amounts of uh, energy being produced in the highlands and huge amounts have been consented recently. We've recently had consented two major offshore wind farms in the Murray Firth which will produce between them two and a half gigawatts of uh, offshore wind energy. We've got the world's first tidal uh, power scheme in Caithness uh, with Maygen, which is an 86 megawatt scheme. So there's a lot of activity happened on renewable energy in the Highland area, and that's been delivered through the Council. So just to conclude, uh, my leadership challenges to you would be, are, are you seen as a positive force for change in your local authority? Are you seen as an organisation which makes things happen? Are you doing everything to ensure that local development plans are effectively project managed and delivered on time and, to, and can then deliver growth? Are you leading from the front in terms of performance management? Are you thanking staff for good performance and, and challenging poor performance? Now in terms of thanking people, it's, a, it's an interesting statistic, but you have to thank someone three times as much as you do criticise to have the same impact. There's a, a significant psychology there around, around uh, thanking people. And are you delivering customer service improvements as part of your improvement plan? I know, I know many of you are. And are you sharing best practice and looking at what other authorities are doing, uh, which events like this uh, are involved in? And just to conclude, uh, just a quote for you from uh, probably one of the best leaders that the world has seen. Um, it always seems impossible until it's done. So 